Wow, look at all these rocks. Oh, yeah. Cool rocks. So, hey, I got a question for you, mister. What? Which rock is your favorite? Um, let me think. Maybe this one, but I think I like this one. I like this one a lot. Okay. Do you know what that is? Um, sand? No, no, no. Um, well, it's daddy. Um, it's at the tip of my tongue. Well, is it sedimentary? Oh, it's sedimentary and it's... Ah, oh, I forget. Okay, that's a limestone. A limestone. Okay, more quizzes. Again. Okay, specifically, let's take a look at the igneous rocks and then we'll do sedimentary and metamorphic. So the igneous rocks, I call them fire rocks. That's because magma from deep down or lava from at the surface, which creates this volcano, create all kinds of rocks that were made from molten lava or magma. So let's move down through the two ways you can slice and dice igneous rocks. The first way is it could be a rock on the surface. I call them lava rocks, but the official name is extrusive. Okay, X for outside, trusive. Um, you could have rocks that are formed maybe 10,000 feet beneath the surface of the earth. Those would be called intrusive. So let's march down the lava rocks and then we'll move down through the intrusive rocks. As I go along, there's another way also to characterize the lava rocks and that's by their color or the chemical makeup. You could have the light colored rocks that are called felsic and the dark colored rocks over here are called mafic. Okay, they have iron in them and other dark elements, dark colored elements. All right, so on the light colored side, we have our first rock called rhyolite. There it is. You see this in the Sierra Nevadas quite a bit, like near Squaw Valley. I've seen a bunch of these light colored lavas. And that's rhyolite, R-H-Y-O-L-I-T-E. Okay, a rhyolite. In the middle, kind of halfway between Felsic and Mafic, it is a lava rock is an andesite, an andesite, and that is from the Andes Mountains. Okay, you see a lot of this in the Sierra Nevadas. An andesite. Now if we move over further, we get into our classic basalt. You'd find this, let's say, in Hawaii. You can see the ropiness of it. If this happens to go into a stream, I love it when they are rounded out. Okay, look at how rounded this is and red it looks. This is also a basalt. I have another one here that's darker colored, very dark colored. Found this here in the streams of Northern California. Also a basalt. And of course it's dark colored mafic. Marching down through the intrusive, igneous intrusive rocks. You know, the most common is a granite. Okay, so here's a granite. And if you look at that rock, as I get it close to the camera, you can see it does have crystals. So how do geologists know this was formed on the interior or in the interior of the earth is that it takes a long time for crystals to form, maybe thousands of years. And this might have been a, a mile or two beneath the surface of the earth. And so it's going to take forever to cool and it's going to have time to create these large crystals. And this is a granite. If it gets a little darker in color, there's different names like granodiorite or diorite. But in general, we're going to call these granites in physical geography. Now, sometimes you go into somebody's house and they'll have a granite countertop. It's dark colored. Technically speaking, it is not a granite. It's a gabbro. G-A-B-B-R-O. A gabbro. And we would find this on the mafic side, right? These rocks, again, would be formed way deep in the surface. Underneath the surface take forever to cool. But they might be chemically the same. In other words, the same elements, the same minerals that are in them. But simply just look different based on their crystals. So there you have it. You've got the igneous intrusive rocks and the igneous extrusive rocks. You can break it down by their color or their chemical composition. And let's move on now to sedimentary rocks. Okay, let's take a look at some... Whoa, we got some trucks. Let's take a look at some sedimentary rocks here. You can see a nice sandstone there. We got a construction worker. Whoa! So here we have sedimentary rocks, and I want to talk about some of the characteristics, and then we have three subtypes. Okay, so the characteristic of a sedimentary rock is that it has strata. Okay, those are layers. 
Now I'll explain to you how those come into being, but you should know that all rocks do eventually crumble into little fragments. And those fragments then can be re-welded together through uh, natural cements and through just enormous pressure of a bunch of layers, let's say. They're soft typically, so if we grab, this is one of my favorites, this sandstone right in here, you can see it's uh, pretty soft. You know, I could start digging my fingers in. I found this in Santa Cruz. And it has fragments that have been welded together. Now, how does that happen? Well, through time, any rock, let's say here's an igneous rock. This is basalt, remember. And this can just start to break apart. You get those black sand beaches in Hawaii. And then eventually that sand can then be deposited at the bottom of the ocean. And then through maybe hundreds of feet, maybe a thousand feet, you get these layers built up and then it starts to compact itself and become a rock. All right, so let's take a look at the subclasses that we have. The clastics, like a sandstone. We have the organic rocks. That would be like coal, limestone, which has uh, old ocean animals, like corals. And then uh, precipitates, also known as chemical precipitates, or just chemical rocks. Um, a good example of that would be like a limestone or salts. Okay, so let's take a look at the sandstones. This one right in here is a sandstone. Here's another one. I found this in the southern part of Utah. Great example of strata and sand grains that are fairly uh, soft and easy to pick out of there. Um, if we were to have, let's say, some seashells that might have been around at the time, check this out. It's got an imprint of a clamshell. Very cool. Uh, continuing on, we could have, let's say, uh, muds or clays that are formed. And this would be a shale. You've all heard of shale before in Utah. You know, oil can get trapped or um, perched on top of this rock because it's a little bit more impermeable than sandstones. Okay, this is a shale. And there's different colors, and I love this one. This is from Southern California on the beaches there. Uh, this was also picked up along the beach there with all these great colors in the Palos Verdes area. Okay, and, um, and these would be all in this category right in here. Sandstone shales, finally conglomerate, which is a bunch of pebbles that have been welded together or cemented together. And we pretty much stole from nature when we made concrete, because that's what this is. This is concrete, but this happens in nature as well. That's a conglomerate. Okay, moving over to our second subtype for sedimentary rocks, organics. Good example of that is coal. I don't have a sample of that, but we can burn that. Poor countries, poorer countries like China do have lots of coal and they burn it. And it's pretty nasty, by the way, when you get behind that train or something that's burning coal. Uh, another thing is chalk. And then the one I want us to remember, notice I underline this in blue and blue over on this category. So limestone. I found this near Death Valley, okay, out there in the desert. And this one over here too I have um, is from the same exact area, probably, you know, I don't think I walked very far to grab this rock too. This is another limestone. Now the neat thing about limestones is that they are formed in tropical areas. Typically a coral reef will then turn into uh, a limestone. So that means these rocks came from a long ways away. We know that our climate was never tropical here at 38 degrees north of the, lat of the equator, and this would be more near the equator. So this moved from that zone to where we live today, thousands of miles away. We have limestones right here in the Sacramento foothills uh, in Cool, California. There are some caves there that have lots of limestone. And then moving on over to the precipitates, I brought this should still be warm, a glass of water. And I've got some ocean, pure ocean salt. Okay, and I wanted to pour that in here. And what do you think is going to happen when I pour that in here? Okay, it kind of falls to the bottom. If I swish the glass around, eventually it would dissolve, right? And I can do this for a long time and, you know, have a good old time at it. But basically, um, if I keep swirling this around, which I, I have it almost too full, but if I swirl it around, you'd see that this would dissolve. 
Uh, but there comes a point where the water is super saturated. You know, you can only put so much of this salt in there. And guess what? It's going to precipitate out, isn't it? And hence the name, the precipitates. So this is our third and final class or subclass for sedimentaries. And let's take a look at some rocks you might get out of there. These are the ones I have. So here's a gypsum. Looks really cool. Got this in southern Utah. Okay, and, and while it looks maybe like an igneous intrusive rock, it is a, a chemical precipitate gypsum. Through evaporation, it probably creates this crystalline pattern. Um, other ones that are in these are chert. Now that I'm not asking my students to remember, but there's a chert. You can see it's kind of cool looking. And then uh, a limestone, as I underlined it. Again, I'll grab this one. Okay, limestone would also be in the precipitates. It's both categories, so don't forget that. So let's move on to metamorphic rocks. Okay, let's talk about metamorphic rocks, our final category. And a few things about metamorphic rocks is that basically they are hard and they are foliated. Don't forget it. So here's one of my favorite rocks. <clears throat> I call it the Dino Claw. Rawr. You can see how it is very um, foliated. In other words, it's got these layers and it's very hard. Look at that. I mean, why would you see such a very sharp edge after all these years? I found this in the California Coast Range. Um, it's one of my favorite rocks because it has such a lot of character. It's hard, it's foliated. It's a metamorphic rock. Okay, um, they are also changed and deformed just like that rock. So let's go through some examples here and then I'll show you how they are formed here in the gold country. So a good example would be shale, which is this rock. Okay, there it is. So you know what the rock is. What category was it in? Is it an igneous rock? Is it a sedimentary rock? It's not a metamorphic, so you've got a 50-50 chance. Go. All right, so you got sedimentary, right? Now the next thing is what subcategory is it in? Is it a clastic? Is it a uh, organic? Or is it a precipitate? Okay, or a chemical precipitate? Ready? Go. Hmm. It's a clastic. Okay, this would have been the clastic. It's a shale. Sandstones are clastic. Conglomerates are clastics. But check this out. If you had a bunch of shale, let's say, out there, here in the foothills maybe even, of California, when it got close to magma that's very hot, it would actually turn it into this rock. Right here, this is slate. We find a lot of this here in the foothills. For example, on the south fork of the American River, not too far from where they discovered gold, it's called Chili Bar, they, there's a ton of this slate. You can use this for pool table, a really fancy pool table, maybe on your roof if you're super wealthy, and uh, maybe for some footsteps or footpath uh, stones for the garden. Okay, so this is slate. Okay, you've seen this before. Super cool rock. Next one is limestone. We looked at that under the sedimentary rocks. Remember the category there? Well, that was both organic and a precipitate. And if you cook that rock, it's going to look like this. Okay, that's a marble. And so let's take a look at um, another one here is schist. Okay, here's a schist. Okay, and my students don't need to remember that, but schist is very common as a metamorphic rock. Um, or you could have a granite. Let's say you were in the Sierra Nevadas where you had some schist that's been kind of cooked already, or you had some granites, which is a metamorphic, I mean, an igneous rock. But if you were to cook it, it would turn into a gneiss. Okay, G-N-E-I-S-S, -S, right here. Okay, and here's a nice, these are fairly rare rocks, I think. You find these in Greenland, for example. I found this near Jackson, Wyoming, uh, near the Grand Tetons. Okay, so this is a nice. And let's take a look again at the diagram, how this could occur. So let's say we had some sandstone and uh, maybe, uh, or maybe better yet, some of these layers like this dino claw that I, it's not really a dino claw, by the way. Um, and we had it close to the heat source. The closer it gets, the more it's going to get cooked. So if you had a granite that was close to the heat source, eventually it could become nice. And so I have a corny joke to tell you right at the very end here. Just a few more things here real quick. We have our state rock. Okay, this is serpentine. 
Serpentine would have been found in the California foothills where there is gold. I'm pretty certain that this is why this is the state rock. It has kind of a serpent skin, by the way. Is that when the miners showed up here in 1849 and saw this rock here, they said, hey man, Eureka, I found it. Gold's nearby. Okay, and so this I found right near here in Auburn, California. Here's an old uh, sandstone. It's uh, ripples. Okay, so a neat sandstone with some ancient ripples in it. All right, so we'll finish here with the dumb joke. So I don't want you to take me for granite because I'm nice, right? Granite turns to nice, so don't take me for granite because I'm nice.